I am with you always to the end of the age. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The whole round world is not enough to fill the heart's three corners, but it craveth still. Only the Trinity who made it can suffice the vast triangled heart of man. These words, written in the mid 17th century by the poet Christopher Harvey, are part of a larger collection of verse and image called The School of the Heart. It's written out of a tradition called the Emblem Book. And in an emblem book, a spiritual subject is explored through a combination of symbolic image and epigrammatic verse, or sometimes prose. This particular emblem book, The School of the Heart, explores the complex and unmanageable range of fallen human feeling. Each of the poet's images considers a different aspect of how we experience things. The darkness of the heart, the division of the heart, the grieving of the heart, and so on. But the verse that invokes the Trinity is called the insatiableness of the heart, and it's about longing. Harvey's verse plays shape games. He's inviting us to notice that the image that we use for a human heart is at any rate topologically equivalent to something with three corners. And that a complete circle such as the round world, if fitted inside a triangle, leaves those corners sticking out beyond its circumference. He's not exactly making a theological point. He's making a poetic one. So I'm not about to give you some ingenious Trinitarian diagram here. Our poet is simply asking his reader to see the angular tendency of our heart's desires, the way they point beyond the things that our round world can furnish the sharpened edges of each hungry heart, pierce beyond what can be seen, touched or understood, so that we, like the disciples on the mountain, look away from what is mortal and towards an intangible love. When Mary Magdalene reached to grasp the resurrected Jesus, he said to her, do not hold on to me. Instead, he commanded her to tell her frightened companions what had happened, that mortality could not hold him, that heaven and earth had touched each other in his resurrection, reconciling, marrying together the things of the eternal God with the things that pass away and are lost. The message was a message of what St. Paul was to call mortality swallowed up by life. On the mountain, Jesus comes to his disciples and they all see him. But some at least are left wanting more, longing, doubting, yearning, men with unsatisfied hearts. As he is withdrawn from the sight that hadn't proved enough for them, he tells them, I am with you always. He has made in his own person the covenant of the everlasting God. I am with you. I am with you is the promise that this unimaginably great being for whom the aisles of the created world are taken up like fine dust nestles closer to the human heart than the body's finite breath, the oxygen in the blood, the pumping valves. 
Jesus' promise of his presence comes with a command. The name we give to it is the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Nowhere else in the testimony of Jesus' spoken words does this threefold naming come. Nowhere else does baptism, the transformation of our yearning mortality into fulfilled joy, arrive through the agency of creator, redeemer, sustainer by these names. Yet across those three names of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we glimpse the vastness of the one for whom all creation is small, the intimacy of the one for whom human, human loves and needs are absolutely known, the mystery of the one who alights upon the heart in the intangible power we imagine as wind, flame, and flight. God in all these approaches humanity with the divine assurance, I am with you always. But he goes beyond even that. We are not passive beings in this, immobilized by the safety of God's love, imprisoned in his arms. We are participants, actors, if we are willing. Jesus' great commission tells those who love him that their love pierces beyond the whole round world and into the heavenly lands where love is king. And he shows the way to those lands and commands his lovers to join him in showing the way to others. The road to love's kingdom lies through baptism, the death of all that is deathly in human longing. It's a dangerous road, and it's a narrow one, but it is protected by the one who makes all, the one who transforms all, the one who keeps all in the life that is bigger than this life. For the guardian of the baptism road is the God of everything and more than everything. As we worship, and even as we doubt, the insatiableness of our hearts points towards God. As we worship, and even as we doubt, Jesus' words of assurance hold us in hope. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The whole round world is not enough to fill the heart's three corners, but it craveth still. Only the Trinity who made it can suffice the vast, triangled heart of man. Amen. <laughs>